Everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Today is Thursday, March 30th, opening day. <laughs> I am so excited. I, opening day to me is like Christmas Day. Uh, for some people, it's the first day of spring. Uh, but for me, opening day is the one day of the year. Everybody's in first place. Anticipation, no matter what team you root for. Uh, and then if you win on opening day, you're one and zero. And I've had many occasions where the Dodgers have won on opening day, and you just, I just start dreaming about what's going to happen the rest of the year. I have a lot of memories about opening day that go back to my childhood. Uh, when I was 12 years old, my my godfather and his son they took me to opening night at Dodger Stadium in 1976. The Dodgers played the Padres. Opening opening night, but it wasn't didn't have the same pageantry that it does currently. Uh, I'm assuming throughout throughout Major League Baseball. I know uh, here in Los Angeles, Dodger Stadium, it's it's a really big deal. Uh, the Dodgers have had opening day since 1977, and for me, that's where really all the memories kick in, just because it's a daytime game, middle of the week. Uh, people ditch work, people ditch school. In 1979, I went to my very first opening day and my mother, God bless her, she allowed me to cut school that day. And what I did was uh, my friend Dan, my friend Eric, uh, we took the, the bus. Uh, I lived about 20 miles from Dodger Stadium back then. I, we took the bus directly into downtown LA uh, to City Hall, and then we walked to Dodger Stadium, which was about a mile, mile and a half. We were young. I, I would never do that now, but back then, uh, we we stood in line and bought our tickets to sit in the outfield, the pavilion section of Dodger Stadium, and I went to my very first opening day. I, I remember Dusty Baker coming out to left field to take his position in the top of the first inning, and we all yelled at Dusty, and he waved at us with a big smile. It made such an impression on me that going forward, I started going to opening day every year. And while I was still in high school, um, that was the one day of the year mom allowed me to cut school and uh, go to Dodger Stadium. Uh, eventually, by the time I was a junior, I had a car. So uh, then I started, I, I went with, with friends, with, uh, as I mentioned, my godfather, with my cousin, in my 20s, I started going every year with my brother. Uh, and then eventually we brought my brother's son, my nephew. Uh, in 1999, the Dodgers were playing the Arizona Diamondbacks. Arizona had a brand new pitcher by the name of Randy Johnson. The Dodgers had a brand new pitcher by the name of Kevin Brown. Such a great game. Raul Mondesi tied it in the ninth inning with a with a two-run home run. I want to say it was a two-run home run. A two run over. It could have been a, a solo shot. And then in the, I believe around the 12th inning, Mondesi came up and hit another home run. So exciting. And like I say, opening day to me brings up just so many memories of, of fan, of friends and relatives. And I always tell people, I think I've been to Dodger Stadium with practically every member of my family, every close friend, every close coworker. Um, I have been to Dodger Stadium with, but there is something special about opening day. So I am very excited for today, and I hope you could tell that by my attitude. It brings a smile. Unfortunately, the Dodgers are playing a night game this year, and I'm trying to figure out why the Dodgers are playing a night game. So this year, there's no opening day. There's opening night. 
against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, but like I said, I have lots of great memories from the, the late 70s, a lot from the 80s and the 90s, getting to see Fernando pitch on opening day, Oral Hershiser pitch on opening day, Clayton Kershaw pitch on opening day. Uh, it's, it's just so much fun. And I, and I hope that you share the same memories with your team going into opening day just because it is such a big deal. I, I remember being jealous of anyone who, who was a fan of the Cincinnati Reds because growing up, the Reds always got opening the very first opening day. They would play like a day before everybody else. And then the rest of the league would follow suit and do their opening days the next year. So what do we got going? I'm going to do an opening day theme of a lot of interesting uh, facts about opening day through baseball cards and through uh, just memories of the past. So let's turn the camera around and we'll get things going. I found a really great article uh, online about opening day. This was written by a lot of the information that I'm giving you comes from the Baseball Hall of Fame website. There's an article in there about opening day. Uh, Bill Francis and Dan Holmes are the authors. So a lot of the info I'm going to be sharing with you comes from this article, which I found very interesting and how I could actually throw in baseball cards to talk about this story. Now, one of the things that I totally agreed when I first read the story was that they said opening day is something special. For them, opening day marks the ceremonial beginning of spring. Now, Joe DiMaggio, who's featured here in his 1941 play ball card, he once said that you look forward to it like a birthday party when you're a kid. You think something wonderful is going to happen. I couldn't agree more, Joe. When you think of opening day, you think of, uh, you think of pitchers. I know I do. As I mentioned earlier, I've seen Clayton Kershaw, Randy Johnson, Oral Hershiser, Fernando Valenzuela, Kevin Brown, uh, just to name a few. But on opening day 1940, Bob Feller threw a no-hitter. Robin Roberts holds the record for most consecutive opening day starts for the same team, the Phillies, with 12, starting every opening day from 1950 until 1961. Tom Seaver also started 12 straight openers, but with two different teams. Here you see him in 1968 tops on the Mets, and 10 years later, 1978 tops on the Cincinnati Reds. Jack Morris threw 11 straight openers for Detroit from 1980 to 1990. Jack went to start three more openers with the Twins and the Blue Jays for a total of 14 opening day starts. That's still a record. Steve Carlton started 14 of 15 openers for, for the Phillies from 1972 to 1986. The one exception being in 1976. Who started that day? Brand new Hall of Famer Jim Cott. Gaylord Perry holds the record for starting opening days for five different teams. Perry is seen here on the San Francisco Giants, 1962, Cleveland Indians, 1973, 1976, Texas Rangers, 1979, San Diego Padres, and 1983, Seattle Mariners. Walter Johnson was the most successful pitcher on opening day. Johnson started 14 openers for the Washington Senators, hurling seven shutouts, and compiling a record of nine and five. Jimmy Key holds the record for most wins on opening days without a loss with seven. Here he is pictured in his 1987 tops card on the Toronto Blue Jays. Nolan Ryan is the oldest starting pitcher for opening day. That shouldn't be a surprise. He was 46 years old in 1993 when he pitched for Texas. Tommy John, was 45 years old when he started for the Yankees in 1989. What about the hitters, you ask? All right, well, let's start with the hitters, but I'm going to start with the pitcher first. The Expansion Montreal Expos, they played their first opener on April 8th, 1969. That day, the first home run in Expos history 
was hit by a pitcher, Dan McGinn. Hank Aaron began the 1974 season in Cincinnati with a home run in his first at-bat. It was his 714th home run and tied Babe Ruth's career total. Pictured here are the 1974 tops Henry Aaron. That was a card I really wanted as a child. And Babe Ruth, this is the closest thing I have to a Babe Ruth card from the 1976 top set, the Sporting News all-time All-Stars subset. Joe Torre is the only player to hit two home runs on opening day in back-to-back -back seasons, in 1965 and in 1966. Here he is pictured in his 1965 Topps card. Ted Williams batted 449 on opening day. Williams had at least one hit in every opening day game he played. Frank Robinson hit eight home runs on opening day, including 1975, his debut as the first black manager in Major League Baseball for the Cleveland Indians. Willie Mays featured here in his 1957 Topps card, and Eddie Matthews featured here in his 1962 Topps card, both hit seven home runs. And I'll leave you on this closing note with a 1957 Topps early win card. Wynn is quoted as saying about regarding opening day, an opener is not like any other game, he recalled in 1972. There's that little excitement, a faster beating of the heart. You have that anxiety to get off to a good start for yourself and for the team. You know that when you win the first one, you can't lose them all. That's a great quote from early Wynn. I hope you look forward to opening day as much as I do. I cannot wait. Enjoy watching baseball today, you guys. Have a great day. It's a beautiful day.